Hi, welcome to my today's classroom. In my today's classroom, I will be talking about peptic ulcer disease, that is PUD. Now, what is this peptic ulcer disease? What is ulcer? How to differentiate between ulcer and erosion? Now, this ulcer is a defect in mucosa which goes down up to muscularis muscular layer muscularis mucosa layer that is known as ulcer and when it is superficial that is known as erosion so erosion is the first stage we can say and later on there is development of ulcer so this peptic ulcer disease is a very common disease and this can involve this may involve stomach it can involve small intestine that's duodenum upper part of small intestine so whenever it affects stomach that is known as gastric peptic ulcer and when it affects duodenum that is known as duodenal peptic ulcer now these two ulcers acid peptic ulcer which is present in the stomach and acid peptic ulcer present in duodenum their presentation is in a different way now why these ulcers occur in stomach and why it occurs in duodenum the main genesis of ulcer formation in stomach is because of weakness in the protective layer of stomach now this protective layer of stomach is mucosa and thus in between the cells of mucosa there are tight junctions these tight junctions prevent the pre prevent the acid to get inside the submucosal layer so these are the tight junctions and mucosa is covered by mucus layer this is also protective so this is a protective layer in stomach normally acid and pepsin these are present in the stomach so normally they don't harm the stomach but whenever there is defect in this protective layer then this defect will lead to formation of peptic ulcer and erosions now the conditions <coughs> which produce defect in this protective mechanism what are these factors which affect the the this protective layer of stomach if person is smoking this smoking is the cause of producing defect in the protective layer of stomach if patient is taking tobacco this will harm the protective layer of stomach. If person is continuously taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, that will again produce the defect in the protective layer of stomach. If patient is consuming alcohol, this will protect. This will cause defect in the protective layer of stomach. H. pylori. This can H. pylori is a bacteria which is the normal commensal of stomach and upper part of small intestine in the developing countries. This may also produce defect in the protective mechanism of the stomach. Now, this defect in protective mechanism of stomach by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, why it is caused by the irritating agents like uh, alcohol, by irritating agents like tobacco and by smoking. Normally, there is tight junction between the cells of stomach in the mucosal cells of stomach whenever the agents which are breaking this tight junction of the of the mucosal layer of stomach when whichever agent breaks up this tight junction will cause break in the protective mechanism of stomach as soon there is a break in this tight junction there is a gap in between the cells and the acid will go inside and will reach the submucosal region in the submucosal region it, is, it will stimulate acid will stimulate h2 receptors h2 histamine receptors and when these receptors are stimulated more acid is generated and more acid is generated again it will enter through the tight to, to that through that gap break in the tight junction and again it will stimulate h2 receptors and further acid is increased so more and more acid will increase and this cycle will continue and will produce further damage to the stomach so like this patient develops 
erosions like this patient develops inflammation and later on ulcerations so these irritating agents like alcohol like smoking like tobacco these all agents will produce weakness in the tight junctions in the mucosal layer of stomach apart from this agents like non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs agents like aspirin which are regularly consumed by the patients these two agents they inhibit cox1 and cox2 receptors as a result of which prostaglandins which are present because of this the level of prostaglandin decreases prostaglandin is a protective protective agent which protects the gastric mucosa it produces vasodilatation it produces thick mucus layer over the mucosa as a result of which it the stomach is protected from acid from gastric acid and pepsin when this prostaglandin level goes down because of inhibition of cox1 and cox2 receptors the level of prostaglandin goes down and there is defect in the protective mechanism and acid will harm the gastric mucosa so this is the basic genesis of gastric peptic ulcer in case of duodenal ulcer genesis is altogether different this is because of increase in acid secretion more acid will reach the duodenum and it will harm the duodenum there it will produce inflammation and there it will produce the ulcerations so duodenal ulcer is mainly produced because of increased acid secretion while gastric peptic ulcer is produced because of break in the mucosal barrier the protective layer of mucosal mucosa and ulcer is produced so these are the two different genesis h pylori this is again one of the culprit which causes duodenal ulcerations so this is the basic genesis of ulcer formation in the peptic ulcer disease now a patient with peptic ulcer disease whenever this reaches gastroenterologist or whenever it reaches a physician they will present with history of pain in epigastric region this pain in epigastric region in case of gastric peptic ulcer this is more on uh, on taking meals after taking meals the pain will increase so usually patients they avoid taking meals and as a result of this in these patients there is weight loss as soon patient takes meals more acid is generated and the whole cycle is repeated and further patient will complain of pain in abdomen in case of duodenal peptic ulcer history is little bit different these patients they complain of pain in on empty stomach because more acid is generated on empty stomach and this will reach duodenum and it will irritate the ulcer and patient will complain of pain in abdomen now this pain in abdomen burning sensation in epigastrium this particular sensation this may be present for 2 3 days and it will subside by its own again there is episode of pain in abdomen so there are there is a recurrence of these symptoms of pain in abdomen and burning sensation in abdomen in acid peptic disease in peptic ulcer disease it is not continuous then if severity increases it will become continuous if ulcer is present on the posterior wall of stomach then in that case sometimes pain may radiate back to the back and patient may complain of pain in interscapular region and sometimes in the lower back region after meals similarly in duodenal ulcer if pain is severe sometimes it may simulate that of acute pancreatitis so in these patients of duodenum as pain is more on empty stomach the pain will take patient will take more and more of milk or food material to get to, to get relief from that pain and as patient as, as food material gives relief in pain more and more food material is ingested more and more food is ingested as a result of which the patient is sometimes becomes overweight so these are this is the relation of pain with peptic ulcer disease now if patient 
is having peptic ulcer disease if there is ulcer in the antral region for a long time. Sometimes uh, in that region, uh, stricture develops in the antral region. There is obstruction develops because of fibrosis in the in that particular region, in antral region and pyloric opening region. So these patients may present with gastric fullness after meals, vomitings after meals and sometimes two to four hours after meals patient will complain of vomitings. So in the later stages if treatment is not taken in a proper way and all agents which are damaging the stomach if they are taken take, if they are continuously taken the patient is taking then in that case patient will develop obstruction in the pyloric region there is pyloric obstruction and this requires surgical intervention similarly in case of duodenal peptic ulcer the patient is not taking proper advice of doctor and if he is not taking drugs properly for the inhibition of acid secretion then then in that case again patient may develop obstruction in that region and may require surgical intervention Sometimes patients of peptic ulcer, they may present with bleeding, hematemesis, sometimes melina, sometimes low-grade bleeding in stomach and duodenum as a result of which there is occult blood in stool. So patients of this peptic ulcer disease because of bleeding may present with anemia because of occult blood in, this, uh, occult blood in the stool, sometimes melina and this may lead to anemia and sometimes patient presents with hematemesis, massive hematemesis in cases of acid peptic, in, SK, in, in this case of acid peptic ulcer. So one of the presentation may be hematemesis, blood in vomitus. So these patients of peptic ulcer disease, they may present either with simple pain in abdomen, they may present with features of hematemesis as a result of bleeding, they may present with features of malina, so during interrogation with patient one should properly take the history properly ask patient about the about the symptoms and it's and you try to correlate it with the disease now usually these patients when they present with pain in epigastrium it has to be differentiated from other pathologies also if patient is alcoholic, always try to differentiate it from pancreatitis, acute pancreatitis. If patient is presenting with this dull aching type of pain in abdomen or epigastrium, then always differentiate it from the cholecystitis, acute cholecystitis or cholecystitis, cholelithiasis. So these, uh, these disorders may simulate this pain. Sometimes there may be dissecting time of aneurysm in abdominal aorta. This may cause similar type of pain, so it should be differentiated from that. So proper clinical examination is required for, for the differential diagnosis, for differentiating it from the other disorders. Gastroesophageal reflux disease may have similar type of symptoms, pain in epigastrium, but it is associated with gastroesophageal reflux. Sometimes this type of pain is because of coronary artery disease. So one should thoroughly investigate for coronary artery disease also. So from history, always properly take the history, always have a proper interaction with patient in order to make a proper diagnosis. In clinical examination, if patient is presenting with chronic type of anemia and such type of pain in abdomen, always rule out any blood loss from the ulcer. In general examination, nothing specific is seen. It, some, sometimes there is simply mild tenderness in the epigastrium and in the upper abdominal region. Rest things are normal. So in order to diagnose this peptic ulcer disease, the diagnostic investigation is upper GI endoscopy. Endoscopic visualization of the upper GI tract, that is esophagus, stomach, properly Visualize the stomach that the cardiac region of stomach, fundic region of the stomach, body of stomach and antral part of the stomach and go up to third part of duodenum for proper and properly visualize it to rule out any ulcer. So this is the diagnostic investigation upper GI endoscopy. With the help of upper GI endoscopy, if, there, if you have visualized the ulcer, always take biopsy from the periphery of ulcer to rule out any malignancy. 
malignancy is more common in the elderly. So always take biopsy from the periphery of ulcer. Sometimes the, the cause of that peptic ulcer is H. pylori. So in, you take biopsy from that region and have a rapid ureostase for diagnosis and histopathology for diagnosis of peptic ulcer disease. So take a proper piece of specimen from stomach and from duodenum wherever there is a pathology. So this is one of the tests for diagnosis. Apart from this, you will do all cardiological investigations if you are suspecting coronary artery disease. The next thing is that you will go for, uh, for the demonstration of H. pylori. In demonstration of H. pylori, you will first have uh, you will first do serological test for H. pylori that is most sensitive. You can go for breath test that is also sensitive. Rapid urease test is done with the help of biopsy specimen that is invasive test. Non-invasive test is breath test and serological test of, rep of this uh, H. pylori. So H. pylori is the one of the culprit of peptic ulcer disease in developing countries and especially in India it is one of the normal commensals of the stomach part and upper part of intestine. So it must be ruled out by clinical investigations. So these are the two investigations which are to be done in the cases of acid pep peptic ulcer disease. Apart from this barium studies. Though barium studies uh, can be done in these cases if patient is not cooperating in endoscopic procedures but barium studies are not so much sensitive and specific. Sensitivity and specificity is about 70% in these cases. So nowadays endoscopic procedure uh, is the main, main procedure with the help of which you can diagnose the disease properly. Once you have made the diagnosis always try to differentiate rule out other possible causes of the pain in abdomen in that particular region and if patient is elderly and if there is ulcer always try to rule out carcinoma carcinomatous ulcer in those patients so this is this is what uh, what you will do in the clinical part of making diagnosis of peptic ulcer disease so whenever a patient is there and if you have diagnosed it as a peptic ulcer disease how to treat that patient first of all if there is gastric peptic ulcer you ask patient to avoid all agents which are barrier breaking like smoking tobacco alcohol these all agents non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug if patient is taking those drugs without any reason then in those cases you will ask patient to avoid these barrier breaking agents then in the second part of the treatment you will give sucralfate like agents sucralfate is a agent which is a healing agent it is producing a coating over the mucosa of stomach so it is more more useful in treatment of gastric peptic ulcer but when patient reaches you the acid level is more in these patients because of break in the mucosa and from there the acid reaches the submucosal area where histamine receptors are stimulated and more acid is produced so this cycle is continuing so acid content of stomach is increased in these cases so together with that you will have to give proton pump inhibitor whichever proton pump inhibitor you want to give though the half-life of every proton pump inhibitor differs so these proton pump inhibitors will help in treatment of gastric peptic ulcer in healing of gastric peptic ulcer before this proton pump inhibitors h2 blockers were used still they are used so they are also helpful in the treatment of acid peptic ulcer in gastric peptic ulcer in case of duodenal ulcer these proton pump inhibitors and H2 receptor blockers these are more effective they should be given to the patients and the healing rate depends on the size of the lesion and how much patient is following the instructions of the physician so this is how you will treat a patient of peptic ulcer disease first you uh, the patient has to avoid all barrier breaking agents and number two to use acid acid 
uh, the proton pump inhibitors, H2 receptor blockers, and giving agents like sucralfate, which protect the gastric mucosa. So this is how you will treat a patient of peptic ulcer disease. Now the patient, in some patients of peptic ulcer disease, prostaglandin inhibitors, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they have to be used because of some chronic joint problem or because of coronary artery disease patient may have to take aspirin. So how to deal with these patients? In these patients, always ask to take the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, aspirin-like drug after meals. Always advise proton pump inhibitors together with these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and aspirin. In case you can, in these cases, you can use COX-2 inhibitors, other drugs which are not affecting prostaglandin levels too much. So these, this is how you will deal with these patients. Now the use of clopidogrel, if patient is not tolerating aspirin and he has more and more problem with aspirin and you want to give antiplatelet agents, then in that case, you can use clopidogrel. But still, clopidogrel and use of proton pump inhibitors together. It is said that if proton pump inhibitors are used together with clopidogrel, then the efficacy of clopidogrel is decreased. But various studies till now have not proved this. So still, we give clopidogrel and proton pump inhibitors together. So like this, medically, you will deal these patients. And if patient has developed complications like perforation, if patient has developed complications like hematemesis, then the way will be different in dealing the, will be altogether different. If patient has developed obstruction in duodenum or in stomach, then patient will have to undergo surgery. In cases of bleeding peptic ulcer, patient will have to go endoscopic procedure with the help of thermal probe, with the help of electric cautery, with the help of clips, we can stop the bleeding from the peptic ulcer. And hemodynamic treatment will be same as in case of other cases of severe massive bleeding, depends on severity of bleeding. So this is how we will treat a case of peptic ulcer disease. Thank you.